Okay, so have you always lived in Richmond County? Yes. Um, tell me how your family ended up in this community. They were born here too. So mine is pretty much the same. I lived uh, right in the same area my entire life. So um, could you tell me what kind of home you live in? Like, like for instance, I live in the house we're in now. It's more of a family home, but for you being a rancher, what type of house are you in? Uh, like an apartment style. Okay. So now we're just going to go over a few questions about solar adoption. Um, have you ever invested in solar, either rooftop or for your home um, or your property, wherever you're at? No. Yeah. Why do you have? Why do you not have rooftop solar? Does that make a decision? Did you make that decision, or was it made for you? It was made for me. Okay. Being a renter, if that was offered to you, do you think that would be more beneficial or? Yes, I do. Why would you think most renters don't offer solar energy? Um, probably because it's more expensive. Up front, it's probably more expensive. But do you think in the long run it would be worth it? Yeah. Where do you think people adopt? Hold on. I love to talk about a little bit about rooftop solar adoption in general. Um, here is a map of the United States. And so, um, if I were to ask you, where do you think people invest in solar energy the most? Could you draw on the map where you think that would be? So just like either draw a circle or X in the areas you think it would be. Probably like Texas, like in this region. So like do I circle the whole thing? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna say like in this area. So, let's just talk about that for a minute. Why do you think that specific area of the middle of the country? I don't know. I feel like it's hotter there, so there's more sun. I mean, there's not more sun, but, like, I feel like they would, I don't know. I feel like they would probably do it. So, for me, when I did this the first time, that was the area I said, too, but I said it because, like, you would think that's more of like the wide open. Yeah, there's nothing okay, yeah. there. That's more of one thing. It's more like open and there's more room. Yeah, for solar panels, plain fields, wherever it is. Um. So yeah. Sorry, I'm making sure I'm not skipping nothing because I feel like I am. So what makes that region, um, community different from the people that live in it versus people in other communities? I guess just like their environment's different. Like, so they're going to be more adapted to, like, the hot and the open versus, like, people over here in, like, Maine. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Makes sense. It's Makes more, sense like, that. crowded over there. Yeah. I got it. Okay. So let's talk about the state of Georgia. So here's a map of the state of Georgia, and I'm going to ask you to do the same thing. What counties do you think would be most open to adopt solar energy probably like the Atlanta area so what makes that community different from all the other communities in Georgia they're like ahead of everybody else Atlanta is like it's more of a city so like they're probably willing to try like more things Makes like sense. toss some solar panels on top of their buildings you know I know it wouldn't be a problem for right them. yeah makes sense why do you think people in that area um, have more solar on their rooftops? It's kind of like you just said. Cause yeah, it's they're just more, like, ahead of the game. They're more um, advanced. Gotcha. So, um, what about most of your close friends in Georgia? Do they have solar energy? No. Yeah. Um, why do you think they don't? Um, it was kind of chosen for them. Like, they rent houses, too. Like, so they were older houses. It's more of a... They don't have a choice. Right. Do you think if they had the choice, they would? Um, probably so. Because it, like, saves money in the long run, I think. So, next we're going to do... Um, if you don't mind, we're going to ask a few questions regarding the role of food in your day-to-day -day life. Um, 
So, if you will, tell me about your regular day with food. What do your meals and snacks typically look like? Um, it really depends on the day. Um, sometimes, like, I'll go get lunch from, like, a fast food restaurant. Um, usually, like, Chick-fil-A or something. Um, most of the time I skip breakfast. And then, most of the time we'll cook supper. So, like, chicken or pork chops or something like that. That's really interesting. Um... For me, it's about the same. Um, I'll go, if I'm at school, I'll go somewhere and get food. If I'm here, I'll eat dinner here, we'll cook, or don't eat breakfast, and yeah, go out for lunch or something like that. So, um, could you tell me about what your go-to meal is and why? Like cooking or like fast food? Let's do both. Fast food is probably Chick-fil-A, obviously. Um, and, like, cooking is probably, like, grilling, like, pork chops or steaks or something like that. So how often do you cook your own meals? Um, probably three to four times a week. So, are you the only person that makes the decision about the food in your house? Yes. So, being that, like, you rent, you probably have people come over and y'all all eat yeah. together. Yeah. Kind of. So, when you go into making a decision about what to eat, what are the things you consider when you're making food choices? What's going to be easy? What's going to be hard to make? And probably... If it's a lot of food or a little bit of food, so like if I'll have leftovers or not. Yeah. So if you have leftovers, it's more like you have another meal for the yeah. next so then day. like I'm set for the next day. Gotcha. So how often do you purchase food for your household? Mm. It could be times per week or per month. Like actually grocery shopping, probably like once a month. But... Like, I'll stop during the week and, like, pick something up to cook probably once or twice a week. So, paint this picture for me. Let's say you're taking a trip to purchase food. What does that look like? Um, well, I get in my car and I drive to Walmart and I go to Walmart and I kind of just go down each aisle until I figure out what I want and then I check out and I leave. So when it comes to feeding yourself, um, what are challenges you face? Like, for example, let's put it in this perspective. Say you had a bunch of friends coming over to eat. What are some challenges you might would face for that? Making sure we have enough food. Like, what's going to be the easiest thing to cook for a lot of people? That's, like, the hardest thing, like, figure it out. So, what about, like, a challenge What versus you cooking for a bunch of people versus you cooking for yourself? What would be a challenge for just cooking for you? I think cooking for one is hard by itself because then, like, you can't always, like, eat all the leftovers or either you don't, like, make enough. You know what I'm saying? Like, most recipes calls for, like, two or more people. So, it's kind of hard making... Unless you're, like, eating a sandwich or something. It's kind of hard making a whole meal just for one person. It's a lot of trouble to go through to make a whole big meal for one person. So, for you, you would say it's easier if you're just cooking for you instead of cooking to grab something to eat. Yeah, like, it's easier grabbing something to eat than cooking a whole meal for one person.